Hi, I wanted to introduce the video. I'm Amanda Bagelbach. I'm going to do the narration. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. My research was originally leaning in the direction of dreaming and the collectivist view of the importance of dreams. However, upon attempting to find my sources, I found a book named The Importance of Dreaming on Native Americans and Other Primitive Societies. When reading this, there was a pivotal turn in the direction of my research. Here was a book reinforcing the ideas of primitive spirituality, and with the dream catcher innately displayed on the front, I realized how Western my view of what the experience I thought of as dreaming, and how it was so based on the constructed for consumption view of otherness, of Native American identity and spirituality. I was so unsatisfied. I found the book Dream Catchers, How Mainstream America Discovered Native Spirituality by Philip Jenkins. It turned the direction of my research to the true path that I was looking for. I had been searching for not dreaming, but vision quests. And as soon as I was able to make the corner in my research, I found a copious amount of research done on the American Indian vision quest. And I quickly learned what a vision quest was. I was excited to know it wasn't just a coming of age, rite of passage for boys into men. It's so much more general, comprehensive, and important for the entire tribe. I learned it's not just this passage, but it's so much more important in how it's the closest conversation that they can have with the great spirit. They're done to gain courage for the sun dance, to seek favor, or to give thanks to the great spirit, and of course, to search for direction. These quests are so much about personal and community. They're about personal power and greatness of character. In my favorite periodical, it's a dissertation by Kathleen Margaret Dugan. It's named The Vision Quest of the Plain Indians and Their Spiritual Significance. Dugan interviewed different elders from tribes. One spoke of the beginning of a vision quest and the visit, of a visit to the holy man in which one would undergo the sacred rite of a nippi, a religious purification. Then one could seek out the vision. Another moment of realization came when I began to understand, as he explained, the intention behind the hallucinogenic qualities of starvation and vision quests. A contributor to Dugan explained how this isn't an accident or unknown that hunger can cause this. It's an important precipitating factor to the quest. And as a Western non-Indian, this had never crossed my mind. I thought of these conversations with Creator as primitive and didn't understand the true intention behind them. So next I want to share with you a selection by J.R. Walker's study of the Sundance of the Plains tribe. Um, uh, Ogala, or O-G-L-A-L-A, -L -A, Dakota man, gives a summary of this experience as dictated to J.R. Walker. It's a very interesting um, explanation, and I think I'm going to summarize it here in total for you guys so you really have the same experience of understanding the importance of it that I did when reading this. He wrote, To seek a vision, one should strip and wear only a robe, a breech clout and moccasins. Close thus, he should take a pipe, smoky materials, and a knife. Go to the top of a high place where others are not likely to intrude. There, he should remove every living or growing thing from his face on the ground, sufficiently large for him to sit or lie upon. Then he should go to this space and remain on it until he has a vision, or until he is convinced that he will not have one. When he enters the cleared space, he should involve the four winds in order that they may not bring inclement weather. Then he should wait a vision, meditating continuously upon his quest. He may invoke the gods, verbally or mentally, either in song or prayer, he may stand, sit, be awake, or asleep, but he must not go away from the space he has prepared. He may smoke as often as he wishes, but he may neither drink nor eat while making the quest. This vision may come to him either when he is awake or when he is asleep, and it may appear in the form of anything that breathes, it may come as an inanimate object, and if it communicates with him, it may speak to him or it may use words that he does not understand, or speak to him in a language of birds or beasts. By something that it does or says, it will make known to him its intent. It's important to note the reception of this vision must be shared in order to better understand the vision and to know the true meaning. The quests are meant to be interpreted by the tribe and they must be explained and told to be understood. 
because there's a sacred sanctity to divisions, and there could be repercussions if one did not follow them. It's so important to the entire tribe and the understanding of these visions to share them so that you may better understand and the tribe may better understand what Creator has been trying to tell you through these visions. So in the closing of this video, I wanted to share with you the story about my favorite vision quest. It was about Crazy Horse. He was told in his vision quest to never leave the side of his horse and he should never leave his headdress. Crazy Horse tried to obey this, and he really tried to listen to this, and then the one time he didn't stay by his horse with his headdress, he was killed. It was so interesting to read these and so many other stories about vision quests and the sharing from the elders of the tribe about the importance of vision quests, about native spirituality and the connection. There were so many interesting moments I learned about plants and their importance of also on the vision quest. I wish I had the time to share them with you in here in this video. I hope you learned a lot and continue to do your research. If you are interested in vision quests, I made a list of my sources at the end of the movie and I'm excited for you to continue your education and I hope that you learned a lot. Thank you.